Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So we're going to go into the word. We're not going to be before you long. We're going to ask if you would turn to the book of Genesis, chapter number one. Amen. Glory to God. Genesis chapter number one. If you have it, say amen. First book in the Bible. All right, so the book of Genesis is a it's the book of beginnings. The word Genesis means beginning. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give the, the, the title of the message. The title of the message is uh, The Generation of Dominion. I know that we've been speaking on generations. But this is a generation of dominion. And here in Genesis chapter number one, we see the account of the great God and the creator of all things began to speak in existence what we are now standing on. Okay. All right, let's look at verse number one. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved on the face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and he divided the light from darkness. And called the light day, the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning was the first day. Now here we have uh, God speaking in existence, the very creation itself. Everything was created by God. Without him, there was not anything made that he was the creator. He created everything. The, the word that they're using for creator is bara. And it is not just a, a, a type of he just grabbed something and made something. It is more like he, he sculptured or cut out something specifically. There was a specific design in everything God did in creation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They say that it was over, the earth is spinning over 400,000 miles an hour. It says that the, uh, uh, the, as many stars that there are in the sky is as many grains of sand that there are on the seashore. We're talking about a great creator. He has a specific design in mind in creating earth. Now, I want you to follow me a minute here, and let's go to uh, verse number 26, 27, and 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creep upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. And the image of God, he created him male and female. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the face of the earth. So here it is. We show that when God began to create, he wanted to show more love than he has ever shown before by creating a man. Out of everything that God had created, the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle on the ground, out of all his magnificence of, of creating, uh, his crowning achievement was you and I. We are the crowning achievement of God. We are made in his image. We don't have all of what God is because God is a spirit. We don't look like spirits. We are robed in flesh. But God gave us some of his characteristics. And one of the greatest things, attributes that I see of God is that when God begins to do anything, the first thing that he does is speak. The writer is recording to us today to a whole generation, not this generation, but every generation that has ever showed up that the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, he speaks. He has a, a specific way of creating and, and changing things and, and making things. He speaks. And so as God speaks and he has created everything, 
it came to my spirit that, that if God was able to speak to everything and that he speaks, that everything that he made has the capacity to hear. Yeah, see, uh, uh, y'all, y'all catch me in a minute here. Yeah, you catch me in a minute. We're, we're serving a God that speaks. He created everything by speech. He created everything by speech. So and, and he speaks to everything. And if he speaks to everything, then everything has the capacity to hear the voice of God. You and I have the capacity. We have the DNA. We have the makeup to hear the very voice of God. Some of you in this room right now have heard God speak to you. He has called you into greatness. He has called you to do some, some magnificent things. You are the crowning achievement of God. And with being the crowning achievement, let me tell you something. You are more valuable than you can imagine. I don't care if anyone has ever have not pat you on the back and told you, honey, you look good. Man, you look sharp. Let me tell you something. If from the very mindset, God intent was that you were to be valuable, that you would be a spectacular investment, that you were supposed to be like a, a prize heirloom, that everyone and look at, oh, look at that. That's something beautiful. You are beautifully and wonderfully made in the sight of God. I don't care what anybody has said about you. You you are worthy. You are worthy to live on planet earth. You are worthy to succeed. You are worthy to be blessed. You are worthy to have whatever it is your heart desires. Okay. So God created the heaven. Then he created the earth and he placed man on it and said this. Have dominion. Fish in the sea, everything on it. He said God told him, basically God said this. Okay, so I'm going to create the earth. i am already done that. I want to place you on it, and you rule everything, and you fix this place up. I just give you the rough model here. So what do we have today? We have, we have buildings. My God, we got airplanes. My God, when we, when we fly, these jets and planes through the air, the birds have to move out of the way. Move out of the way. We got dominion. Man has dominion over everything. My God, they say in, during the tsunami, I'm talking, still talking about the creation of God. Well, during that one tsunami that we had years ago, that over 300 different species of all types of fish just came out of the water they ain't never even seen before. Documented. I've seen some of them. I said, that's crazy. Some crazy looking stuff. So God is a, you know what? I believe today that God is still creating some stuff right here on earth. He's still creating things. And he is still saying for man to have dominion over it. Now, I'm not going to be before you long here today. But I, I want you to see something in the word of God. If God says for man to have dominion over everything that they see. Okay, fowl in the air. Fish in the sea. Cattle on earth. Every creepy thing in every creep. Okay. Why is it that man does not have dominion over his own issues? See, y'all ain't following me today. You don't follow me. See, we serve a God, the creator. You are made out of his image, his likeness. You have, the, you have an intelligent design in you. You are more valuable than anyone has ever told you. You are more valuable than anyone has ever expected. And, and, and your life is supposed to be a reflection of the God that created you who is excellent. You are supposed to be exceeding in every aspect of your life. You have the God design in you. You have the, the intelligent design in you, the superior design in you. You are the crowning achievement of God. Jesus said, let me tell you something. I came that you may have life and that more abundantly. You ain't just supposed to be here living. You are living under, beneath your privilege. You are a privileged creation of God. To call things that are not as though they were, you are a privileged creation of God to exceed where no one else has succeeded before. There are books in here.
here that is supposed to be written. Songs in here that were supposed to be sung. There are people in this very room that have not yet tapped into what God has called you to be. You are not here just to exist and get your blood pressure down. You're here to be in the favor of God and be what he called you to be. Okay. So he, he gave man dominion. This is a generation that will have dominion. All of those, all of us that have been called of God, born of God, this is the generation of dominion. You're supposed to have dominion over everything that you face. You're supposed to have dominion over your own issues. You have the power to have dominion over the issues that are in your life. If you do not have power over your issues, then you are not attached to God because the because God is the creator and has the power over everything. And as long as we are aligned with God, you will have the dominion, the power necessary to see your issues fall to your feet. Now, issues are not really the problem. I had a message I preached once, and the message was, everybody has an issue. Subtopic, is you. You, your issue. You yeah, ain't the other folk. It's, it's you. You, the issue. Okay, so, here, so here's the thing about issues. When you have an issue, many times our mind plays tricks on us to have us think that we're not able to overcome it. That is too big an uh, issue for you. But here's the problem if you don't deal with your issue, it becomes a problem. Okay, now if your issue becomes a problem, then the other issue becomes a problem. Now it becomes too much for you to deal with. And so folk walk around life 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old with a whole bunch of problems because they never dealt when it was an issue. Now God said for man to subdue everything. And he knew that there were going to be things in your personal life that you still had to subdue. The word dominion means to also subdue. It means to rule. It means to reign. It means to dominate. I want to speak to men, to men of God today that as growing a man, it is challenging. Growing as a man is challenging. And there are issues that always come up. I, I, want, you, I want every man to know that you are called and you are equipped to challenge every obstacle. You are equipped to overcome everything that you face. You are equipped to be more than a conqueror. You are equipped to be victorious. I don't care what issues you're wrestling with. God has empowered you to walk in dominion that means you got to deal with some stuff I know where did you live uh, before you got to Christ my God we had me well, before I came to God I just dealt with stuff now I come to God let me tell you something you'll get the power of God in you you're able to overcome some issues that you have not every one of your issues are going to be solved by the Holy Spirit and God from heaven falling down like a dove and he grab you and pull you out of your stuff you are equipped from the mind of God from the very beginning of creation to overcome Overcome some stuff yourself. Get up and be a man of God. Get up and be a woman of God. Deal with your issues. They're not greater than you. Our God is what? My God, we were singing this song here. But do you believe that he is greater than anything that you're facing, your circumstances, your challenges, and all this stuff, these issues that you have in this life. Do you believe that if you just line yourself up with him and trust him for the outcome, that he will be a deliverer for you? I had a son that was healed when they said he couldn't be healed. And all I did was trust God. Say some prayers, trust God. Go on, do it, God. Build up your faith. Build up your knowledge in God's word to the extent that you have these issues. And you say, what? Well, you know what, God? Some of this stuff you're going to have to handle. I'm going to go to bed and give me a bowl of ice cream, go to sleep, and I'll see you in the morning. What kind of dominion are you going to have? What do you think we're coming to church for? Did you learn anything to handle these issues when you get home? 
See, I got a problem with, with, with these prophets and, 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 the, and these preachers that's giving you these, these nice messages and, and it's going to be all right after a while. No, get home and cast that devil out of your house. Get rid of that mess. You an alcoholic? What you doing with that wine in the cabinet? Get rid of it. You got to be a participant in your own breakthrough. You going to get delivered and you don't want to lift up a hand. Jesus didn't, let me tell you something. Jesus didn't help nobody that didn't do something. That man couldn't walk for 38 years. Jesus told him, I don't care what they, I don't care what you say. Get up and take that bed on the wall. Play it with me. You better do something. Roll over or something. So how you want something from God? You ain't participating. Do it, Lord, do it. Do it, Lord, do it. He'll do it for you. Ooh, yeah. Y'all make up a song. You make up a song before you actually do something. Now think about it. Nobody greater. Greater than you. Because some of your stuff you tell me, I ain't going to do. Who you playing with? Because your soul ain't God. You playing with yourself. You fooling yourself. Self-deception has to be one of the greatest fallacies of man. Look at yourself in the mirror fooling yourself. You done played a trick on you. Got a fool? Did I say fool? What kind of fool? <laughs> we need to be maximizing life. We are... We are of a, an intelligent design. When God called us to have dominion, we have claimed dominion over this earth. Everything on this earth. We didn't either filet, fried, chocolate, cold, baked. You know what I'm saying? We got the shark. We got the, we got the shrimp. We got everything. We didn't put under the knife. We didn't burn all them birds that fly. All of them been ate. Some of them bugs too. Everything on earth been, just, been just subdued. We shaving mountains down. We flying as high as we want to go. We, we, my God, we taking rockets to them wherever they going. Because some folks, because some folks think they ain't gonna say that. Some folks think they lie, but anyway, we we have dominion over everything. But you personally have issues that you have failed to deal with. The only way you can have dominion is that you have to confront some things. Confront the issues of your life and you will maximize your life. Well, I, I, you know, I don't have the education and I'm not able to eloquently speak. And I, Well, go to school and learn that. Pick up a book. You know, I, I believe that my gift is, the, is a prophetic calling. And, and then I, I, Get a book. Start praying. What are you going to do to maximize your life? You're supposed to have dominion. You're supposed to be living life more abundantly than just existing. You are a child of God. You are made of the intelligent design. And everything that you attach yourself with God with will succeed. So if you don't have success, that means you ain't doing nothing. You can come to church and lie and tell us all these stories all you want. The truth is in the pudding. We don't see no fruit on your tree. Oh, y'all thought I was going to get you one of them, you know, woman thou I loose how many knees or something like that. No, no. Uh, I ain't getting in trouble because of y'all. <laughs> you better, <laughs> you, the truth is you better get to work. Are you praying at least? Can we get a prayer out of you? Do we have to tell you as pastors and leaders that you got to pray every day? Do we have to, can you, can you do that? Can we get you to pray every day? Can you get a conviction if you do not pray every day? This is a lifestyle for us, for us to have dominion. This is what we do. It is a lifestyle. Can we get you to pray every day? Can we get you to read your scriptures every day? This is what we do. It is a lifestyle for us. Dominion belongs to you, but you must be a participant in expecting God to move on your behalf. What will you do? My question is you today. What will be your response concerning the issues that you're facing right now? The issues that will take place in this continent, in this country, in the coming days. What will be your response? 
If you're not making preparation to trust God every day, you are subject to whatever this world brings you. When you actually are supposed to be ruling over it. You're supposed to be ruling over your issues. You're supposed to be ruling over your flesh. No, uh, let me tell you something, y'all. Uh, you ain't supposed to be falling every day. All the time. Oh, again and again. Same time of month. You still do. Do you have to meet? Can you tell your flesh just uh, shut up? <laughs> we ain't doing that no more. I'm trying to get my life. Let me tell you something. Get yourself a mirror. How many of you got a mirror up there? Get yourself a mirror. Get in it and say, we ain't doing that no more. I'm getting right with God. I want to change over my life. I command the men to come over you. <laughs> Didn't lay hands on yourself and pass out. Y'all play. Y'all play. Y'all play. Don't work on you. Ain't going to work on nobody. You better try. Lay hands on yourself. Call them demons out. You know who they is. Don't come up to the altar expecting us to use Adam. Don't come up to the altar expecting us to use the gift every time you come up here. Cast that devil out yourself. Call him out by name. And you're hateful. You're unforgiving. you bitter. Call it out and get rid of it. When you walk in the dominion that God has promised us, by dealing with your issues, by dealing with your circumstances, by dealing with the problems, you'll see how God will just begin to move you to a greater level, to a different place, to, to a greater expectancy. You have to be a participant. He wants that for you. And he doesn't understand uh, why you're not doing it. Because he has provided everything for the success of your missions. He's, he's done everything. Everything's already laid out. So, so why aren't you taking advantage of the abundant life? Some of you may think that, that you can't even write. You're the one that's supposed to be writing a book. Because everything, when we tie up with God, everything excels. Everything gets better if, we, if you're trusting God more than you're trusting yourself. This is the generation of dominion. We're, having, we're in a time now where God is calling the real up front. He's calling real prophets. Some of you going to go to some of you going to go to church and, and you're going to go to a prophetic conference and you're going to be expecting them to tell you about a husband in a car in, in, a, in a house. And, and you, you expect him to tell you about your, your next job assignment, stuff like that. But he's going to start, the, the real prophets are going to uh, begin to speak to your spirit and say, God wants you to make a change where you are right now. He wants you to get in his face more and submit to him. The real prophet is going to point, it is the index finger. It is going to point in the direction in which God is going. How many of you want to be in the direction that God is going? God, God is going to give you that word. He's going to give you that confirmation, and you will be, you will be able to excel from there. This, this, is not, this is no laughing matter. Are you seeing the signs in, in this nation? Are you seeing? My, my sister was just in France the day that plane blew up over there, and we didn't hear from her for a whole week. And she said they suppressed that information. She didn't even know until she got back here that, that the plane had blew up. Don't you see the signs of these random attacks on innocent people who don't even carry guns? Okay, this is, this is, a, it is a, a eye awakening moment for the church to understand that we need to be on our post. My God, we need, to, we need to not only affect those around us, but we need to actually allow the spirit of God that we say we have affect us. Bring the changes necessary that we're supposed to have to succeed. You cannot hold bitterness in your heart. And unforgiveness, you cannot hold that. It is poison for a believer. You don't poison yourself. Somebody said unforgiveness is like, it's like taking a, a, a couple of tablespoons of poison, hoping that it killed the other person. When it actually is killing you. Dominion belongs to you. And I, and I believe that 
out of what I've said today, that someone is just going to start, someone is just going to write down all their issues and put it on a piece of paper and start dealing with them. And I can guarantee you, you will see them disappear. Because the plan of the enemy is to get you not to deal with those. Because once you find out, you can get rid of all your issues. You'll be like, okay, I'm working on everything right now. Everything on the, credit, everything, everything on the table. Pull out, come out your pocket, put out your pockets. Clean pockets. Clean hair. I got clean hands. I'm putting everything on the table. And I'm allowing you to be God. I'm going to participate. I'm going to say no sometime. And I'm going to say yes to you. You have dominion. You just haven't exercised it. That's all it is. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, accept him as Lord over all. Uh, that word Lord means master, ruler, controller, owner. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. My God, you can have dominion. Because he's running everything. He rules everything. You can have dominion. Come on, let's stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants the very best outcome for your life. But you have to align yourself. You have to attach yourself to him. He has all the power to deliver you from whatever it is that you're facing. Any challenge you have now and any challenge in the future. He has, he has your best in mind. He spent his blood to perfect that person called you. I know we try to work on being perfect. God thinks you are already perfect. When he created you, everything that he created, he said, you know what, this is good right here. The crowning achievement of God is you and I. And he will turn the galaxies and everything else upside down to make sure that your salvation is secure and deliverance and dominion belong to you. You are more valuable than anyone. If no one has ever told you that they loved you, understand you were created out of love. By the Spirit of God. Is there anyone that is in need of prayer? What are the issues that you're facing? The devil don't want you to know that if you get prayer, two or three that are gathered together in his name, touching and agreeing, he don't want you to know that that other believers with you praying make you stronger that will give you the confidence to be able to face your issues head on he wants you to think that they're too big let me tell you something there's nothing too big our God is bigger our God is greater there is no one greater than he God and the devil is not wrestling and the devil ain't in hell with a pitchfork sitting on a throne. He is subject to the same God that created everything. Will you trust him enough? Say, God, I need a change. I, I need a change on the inside. Uh, I, I, I've been working on it for quite some time, but, but I need your help on this one. Right? I'm going I'm to lean a little harder on you for this one, God. We had no problem leaning anywhere else. Whatever you want, you, you usually go out and get it. How about getting some of the things that belong to God? He wants you to have them. Hallelujah. What are the issues you're facing? What is it that you need him to do? He'll do it for you. Hallelujah.